Hello everyone, you're welcome once again. This is Beatrice Chimpi. I'm glad you're in this space today. You've decided to come here. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And in today's video, we are going to share about how to choose a marriage partner. The 10 points to look out for when you're choosing a marriage partner. I've been personally married for 10 years and I get a lot of questions from different people. How did you manage? How did you know he's the one? How did you choose? Hi, you bitches, you're so lucky. How did you get to choose a man and you settle down with? Well, there are some things I looked out for and some, those are the things I want to share with you today. So please sit around, click, like, share, and let's get rolling. The first thing you have to consider is for you to have standards. You're the one looking for a marriage partner. You want someone that is going to fit in your life. We all have different personalities and different kinds of life. So have standards. And in these standards, some of them can be negotiable standards and some of them will be non-negotiable standards. When we are choosing marriage partners, we are choosing someone we're going to spend our lives with, someone who is going to affect our everyday life and the entire end of our life so have standards if your standard is i want a man who is younger than me i want a man who is older than me and your that standard to you is non-negotiable then consider that if your standard is uh, i don't want a man who whatever your standard is please have standards though these standards have to be negotiable and some have to be non-negotiable to me my non-negotiables where someone sh should have been godly and someone should have, uh, you know, I wanted someone who is older than me. And those were non-negotiables. If anyone want, came along and didn't fall in those, I wouldn't negotiate anything about it. Number two, basics in common. You should have certain basics in common. In case some people don't want children, some people don't want women who work, or men who work, or men, a man who will be working up country or outside countries. So are those basics common, the children, the number of children? If, you're, if the basics are not common, you'll struggle to settle with this person. Family history. When you're looking out for a marriage partner, look at their family history because their family is going to affect the entire life that you're going to be together with that person. So don't take it for granted. Look at where does this person come from? What are their beliefs? What, are their, what is their history about marriage? Are they keepers? Are they throwers? Do they believe in sorcery? Look out for that. Marriage history, we cannot take it up. When you get married, a lot of things in your marriage are going to be affected by the marriage or the history of the family of the person you've married. So consider it as a very big point that you look out for the history of this family. Where does your husband or wife you want to marry come from? Are you okay with that? Then it's okay you can settle with that person. Number four is anger management. How well someone handles anger in moments of pressure, moments of, of stress, will determine so much how they will handle you one day or how you guys will be handling matters. So when, while choosing a marriage partner, look out on how they handle th their anger. If the way they handle their anger, you like it, then you can settle with them. When I was choosing a marriage partner for a husband, and that is Mr. Chimpy, the way he handled his anger was by talking. Talking and talking and talking. He doesn't leave any stone unturned. That is how he handles, or he used to handle his anger. So, but I've had instances or instances of friends where people, when they have anger, they're coming right up to you. They want to strangle you. They want to break everything around. I wouldn't want to settle with someone like that. And I don't think anyone else would want to settle with someone like that. Because in the end, they may hurt you in future and your, your life is at stake. So, our viewers, I want you to tell me, how do you manage your anger? The guys that are dating, or even if you're not dating, how do you manage your anger and how do you plan on improving if it's bad? Please comment below and we get to know how you manage your anger. Number five, the person's level of confidence and self-esteem. 
What do we mean by this? If someone feels they have low self-esteem, they will not appreciate you as a person. Everything you try to do, they feel like they are being put down. They will not appreciate your success. They will not push you to greater heights because they think every time, you, like a woman, every time you, you go to greater heights, you're, you're going to be, you're not going to listen to them. You're not going to be subordinate. If it's a man, if my husband gets uh, promoted to being a manager, he will, he will start maybe being so proud. Please, that is kind, the kind of self-esteem I'm talking about. If someone has self-esteem, they don't mind how big or how greater heights their, their partners become. They just push them because they know together we can and divided we fall. So please consider self-esteem and confidence of a person so greatly. Number six, someone you can talk to freely. What do we mean by this? When you're choosing a marriage partner, this is a person you're going to be sharing to or with every day of your life. So. Pick someone you can talk to even with about the nitty gritties. Like an insect has passed at your workplace and you laugh about it. You can easily call your boyfriend and tell him an insect has passed. Anything has happened at work. Someone, you know, uh, you know anything, any joke. And even when it reaches times when you want to cry, you can freely cry before this person. While I was choosing a marriage partner, that time maybe we were dating with my husband. We were staying in a, in, a, in a hostel and you know, I, I came from a background where we were, I was, you know, with my mom in a conservative manner. So I didn't know how, I wasn't a very free person. I didn't know how to express my feelings to someone, maybe if someone hurts me. So my roommate, we were staying two in a room, my roommate hurt me. I called my, 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 my boyfriend crying. He was on the ward, you know, rotating. I called him and told him, you know, they've hurt me. My roommate has, has, has hurt me. I cried and he told me, come. When I look back, I, I, I even laugh ab ab about it because it was funny. But to me, it felt like he's the person I want to talk to about that. Anything about my life, I would and I still talk about it. I feel free to talk with him. I feel okay. I feel like he can listen. He can, you know, I, I can talk to him. I can trust him with my feelings, the bad and the good. Number seven is intellectual level. Please, 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 when you're picking a marriage partner, consider the intellectual level of someone. This cuts across. Someone, how do they reason? If it's a woman, is this the kind of woman you're going to, who is going to sit home and wait, the baby is sick, but they can't initiate taking the baby to the hospital and calling the father later, but they rather wait for the father to come back home and say the baby is sick. The baby, you know, the condition has deteriorated. That is when they tell you at 10 when you've just come back. Someone has to have the reasoning capacity to know I can first do this. I can first give the baby some sugar or some, you know, anything, any first aid and then take the baby to the hospital. This intellectual level cuts across so many things. Their reasoning capacity, even men, when you sit with this man, do you appreciate their reasoning capacity? Do you feel like when they are reasoning about the future, it's the future you want? So consider someone's intellectual level. Number eight, chemistry or physical compatibility. Many people these days, they say, just, just, just marry him, even if you don't love him. My dear, you're heading for a, a, a pit hole. Marriage, the chemistry matters a lot. Someone you can love intimately, because the, the, the ultimate reason why you're getting married to this person is for procreation. How will you be able to, you know, become intimate with someone you don't have chemistry with? And another thing, it is so easy for someone to break up and leave this person because they have no attachment to them. They don't feel like they are losing anything. When you're marrying someone, marry someone you have chemistry with because that chemistry will help you and hold you. Now, uh, I feel this generation has been told a lot, most of the women, as long as the man has money, as long as the man, you don't consider whether you love them or not. So many things are going to happen in your marriage that will require to stand only the, because of the fact that you love this person. So choose wisely, have chemistry, love the person you're picking. Number nine, level of responsibility. I think as I was, you know, writing down or thinking about these points, 
I thought level of responsibility will only, you know, I'll talk, only talk about the women because we want men who will take care of us, who will be able to take care of our home. But also as women, we have to have a certain level of responsibility. A man, when you're looking for a woman to get married, to marry, don't choose the one who stays home from morning up to evening. She doesn't do anything. She doesn't work. She will tell you, I finished school. I don't have a job. But they can't even go out and look for a job. She's going to be like that forever. And your home is going to be in, you know, in Kwagamaya, like they say. For us men, uh, for, for, the, for the side of women, look out for, is this the kind of guy who always calls you? I'm stuck. I don't have fuel in my car. Please send me 50,000. I'm stuck. I don't have lunch. Please send me lunch. I'm stuck. Please send me some money for I've seen some shoes. This is not the kind of person you want to get married to. You want a man who can take care of you. You want a man who is responsible enough to, to take care of a home and manage a home as a head of a family. So as you're marrying, consider the level of responsibility of someone before you settle with them. Number 10, please consider the past relationships of someone. When you're going out with someone and you're considering to marry them or to settle down with them, look out for their past relationships. You may not ask them directly or sometimes you may need to ask them directly. How many girls have you dated? How many boys have you dated? My, myself, when I was going out with my, hus or with my husband now, I asked him, how many girls have you dated? And I knew it in my heart, if he had gone beyond two, I'd be like, no, I'm not getting married to this one because I'm going to be the third and he'll date another one because I don't think he knows what he wants. Because before you go out to tell a girl that I want to marry you, you know that you, know, you're, you already have like 50% of what you want. So the past relationships, how well did this person manage the past relationships? How well did, are they still, you know, courting? He's coming to talk to you, but they have not yet broken off with the other partner. Past relationships, how well did they manage? Did he manage that relationship? Does he have a kid with the other person that you need to know about? Please consider the past relationships of someone before you settle with them. Those are the 10 points that I came up with as bitches. If you're married, what are the points that you considered when you were choosing your marriage partner? And those that are not yet married, what are you looking out for? What are those things that you want to consider in a marriage partner? Please comment in the comment section below. Let this discussion continue. Let's keep sharing and help each other, help those who have not yet settled to settle. Comment, like, and subscribe, and follow our channel.